Lake Maple Products. We are just shutting down for the day. We're running a two foot by four foot Corsair with very high output race blue pans. Uh, video is coming later, but for the day today, we had about 190 gallons of sap, and including startup and shutdown, we averaged 44 and a quarter gallons of evaporation. 190 gallons in uh, four and a half hours, exactly four and a half hours. Anyway, a video is coming later on because there's going to be a lot of skeptics uh, that are going to question that. So there will be an extensive video which is going to prove those things later. Now in this video, I just want to just uh, go over shutdown, my shutdown procedure. Uh, I run things pretty hot until I have about 15 gallons of sap. At that point, I stop throwing in big, huge wood. This, this is too big to ever throw in, but sometimes we do if it's in our way. Uh, and then as I start shutting down, if I'm down to 15 gallons, I'll, I'll stop filling the firebox so full, and I'll fire only with this stuff. This stuff burns away in a minute or so. And then, um, by the time my head tank is full, I have maybe about an inch or inch and a quarter in the flue pan, and about an inch and a half in the front pan. This is what I want the firebox to look like. Just some hot coals. Uh, I spread those around. This is a force draft evaporator. I spread those around kind of evenly, and I keep on running my force draft right until it's empty. Uh, the first couple times you run an evaporator, you may take things a little bit more carefully, and I do the first time I run it every year too. I, I don't run it so aggressively to the end. I'll leave myself 15 gallons. You might even have yourself a five gallon bucket of sap just in case you had an emergency somewhere. One thing to keep in mind, if you're basing your density off of temperature, which is what almost all of us do, whether you're using an analog dial thermometer or an automatic draw system with a digital display, you very well could and often might have finished syrup in your draw off compartment, this compartment and maybe even the next compartment over. There is no way for you to know that unless you do a, a test with specific density or refractometry. Uh, and I'm not going to bother with doing that. I'm just going to supervise it. I'm going to be here until steam pretty much stops coming off this evaporator. And just keep that in mind, though. You could still have a catastrophe in your front pan. Even though you have hardly any fire, that fire brick in your, fire, in your combustion chamber is still at 900 and some degrees minimum. And that stays hot for a long time. And that is enough to uh, at least burn the syrup in your pan, if not completely scorch your pan. And I want to go through with you the procedure, I think we made today, we had pretty sweet pans to start with, and I think we made at least six gallons today, maybe seven gallons of syrup. Uh, much of that is bottled. We had a big crew here today, we had a lot of help, so a lot of that got bottled. Right now we have maybe three gallons or so in here. And I just want to show you what I do. Now, when I run an evaporator, I tend to draw off heavy. I don't like finishing on a gas burner, I don't like the time it takes, I don't like the waste of fuel. And so I tend to draw off my syrup a point or two over density. And then at the end of the day, I bring it back down to the proper density. And I'll show you how I do that. It's almost imperative to have a, a Murphy compensation cup to do this. If you don't have a Murphy cup, you need to know your temperature and you need to have a compensation chart and be fluent with it. Um, but I'm gonna show you how I do it with a, uh, with a Murphy cup and, uh, and a hydrometer. So what I'll do, and the reason it's imperative to have a compensating device like this or a compensation chart is because you have no idea what this, what this temperature is of this product. We drew it off over the, Lord, over the course of the last few hours. I have no idea what this temperature is. Don't know and I don't even care. Um, so to, to nail our density, I'm just going to fill up a sample from our syrup that we drew off today. I give this cup just a moment, the, the needle is fairly responsive, but I will give that cup just a moment for that needle to stop moving. It looks like it's creeping up ever so slightly. It's going to land just on the heavy side of 64. So that means I want my hydrometer to float on the heavy side of 64. So let's do that. And look at that. We're at 66. That's heavy syrup. That's what I aimed to do. That was my objective. So we need to bring that down by about two points. I'm 
going to turn my auto draw valve open. That valve is opening. And I'm going to take some, take some more liquid off. I want to dilute this syrup down. I'm too heavy right now. I want to dilute it down. Now remember our last Murphy cup reading was 64. Do you think it's still going to be 64? I bet not. This liquid coming out of here is pretty hot and we just put a lot of it in there. Let's do another sample. Now we're coming to the to the light side of 64. We're at like 63 and three quarter. That's because the syrup is hotter. So now we're going to aim for 63 and three quarter bricks. Let's see where we land. We're pretty close. That's that liquid that I took off brought us down to about 63. So we're a little on the light side now. Perfect. We're going to put that in our in our in our uh, on our propane burner. We're going to bring this back up to temperature and run it through the filter press. By the time it comes out of the filter press, sits in the bottler for a moment, we'll probably be back down to, down to perfect density. And uh, we may even have to add sap later on again. But at least right now, we're stored in a way, we can walk away from this for the day and we don't have to worry about crystallization in our container and we know that our density is right on the money. So that's, that's a good way of doing it. Now, the, the alternative to this method is to draw syrup off that's too light. Why, why do we do that? We, we then have syrup that's, that's two points too light. Now what do we do? We have to boil it down again. We just got done boiling. Let's get it to perfect density or, or even heavy density on our evaporator and, and then bring it back down later on just by adding a less dense liquid. That makes a lot of sense and it's gonna save you a lot of time and propane and frustration. I just wanted to share that and um, hit us up if you have any questions or anything. We'll send another video very shortly showing you the performance of this evaporator. Again, I'm Jim Schumacher, Smoky Lake. That's what it boils down to.